Olguin. 125.4. 125.4 for Dihul Olguin. And his opponent with an unblemished record, the rising young featherweight, Jalen Skywalker. Official weight for Walker, 125.2. 125.2 for Jalen Skywalker. This will begin the action tomorrow here at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino here in Hollywood, Florida. Five o'clock Eastern time, live on DAZN. I also want to wish all of you a happy holiday season as we have this tremendous stretch here on the zone. Jalen Walker and Dihul Olguin to start off the action tomorrow at 5 Eastern, 2 Pacific time, right here on the zone. And now both men will make their way over to the interview position to talk with my colleague, Todd Grisham. As you will hear from both fighters, Walker looking to remain undefeated, but he has a stern test in Dihul Olguin tomorrow afternoon, live on DAZN. Once again, we send it to Todd Grisham. Todd. Thank you, Ray. We'll wait for Jalen to make his way over. It's much easier to take pants off than to put them back on. We can tell you that. <laughs> but here he comes, the Skywalker himself. Jalen, six wins, six knockouts. Your first time ever fighting in the United States. You look like you're in great shape. How do you feel right now? Ready to go, excited, ready to put on a show. Now tell everyone why you had to have your first six fights in Mexico. I had to have my first six fights in Mexico because I was 17 and I was too young to fight out here. So now it's my time to show I'm a U.S. debut. Yeah, in the United States, you have to be 18 to be a professional fighter. In Mexico, you can go younger. So that's what he did. Cross the border, six fights, six knockouts. To someone who's never seen you before, how would you describe your style? A power boxer, aggressive, exciting, smart, but it's still exciting. So if you want to see me, you want to watch it. You predicting a knockout in your first fight here on the zone? Yep, stoppage, TKO, or knockout. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Good luck to you, Jalen. Back over now to sweet baby Ray Flores. Thank you very much, Todd. Walker seems very confident, and now we will bring up two confident welterweights tomorrow night, six rounds or less scheduled. First of all, please welcome from Siaya, Kenya. His record, four wins, four losses, one draw. Two wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dennis O'Koth and his opponent, from Staten Island, New York. He brings in an undefeated professional record that stands at eight wins, half a dozen victories coming by way of knockout, known as the Albanian Bear. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Raisha Tamati. It's all being brought to you by Eddie Hearn for Matchroom Boxing and Triple G on Promotions. And also sponsored by Bet Online, Air Force Reserve, and JD Sports. As we have Dennis O'Koth on the scale. One forty seven for Dennis O'Koth. One forty seven for O'Koth. And his opponent, the undefeated, the Albanian bear, Raisha Tamati. 146.6 for Raisha Tamati. 146.6 for Raisha Tamati. We have Mati and Okoth, a part of our sensational night of boxing 
as we go live at 5 Eastern, 2 Pacific time, live on DAZN from the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino here in Hollywood, Florida. Monty and O'Cold, six rounds or less in the welterweight division. Rayshot Mati will make his way to the interview position as he will have a conversation with my dear friend, Todd Grisham. Rashad, back in action. That was a quick turnaround for you. How are you feeling? I'm good. I'm ready to go. You know, um, last fight was a little short, so now I'm looking to make it a more interesting fight this fight, and we'll see what happens. Everyone knows you as the Albanian Bear, but if you could share the story about what your first nickname was and how it came about. You were the Punching Baby. Yeah, oh my god. Uh, ever since I was little, I was always punching and stuff like that. So it kind of what motivated me to start training and competing and all that stuff. So then it transitioned to Mad Dog. And then finally, Albanian Bear. But, but your mom called you the punching baby, didn't she? Oh, yeah, she still does. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, what are we going to see from the punching baby on Friday night? Uh, just an interesting fight. You know, I want to I be able to steal the show. And that's the main goal for every fight. Um, so welcome to the Mighty Show, everybody. All right, there he is. And I know you want to speak a little Albanian to your friends and family overseas. What's your message? Uh, my Albanian's not too good, but... Uh, i put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> you better come up with something. Um, yom kenasi, yom shiptad. Boom goes the dynamite. Ray, back to you. Thank you very much, Todd. Hey, that was pretty good. I got to say, from Ray Shot Mati. Now we get ready for our next matchup. This one, 10 rounds in the super middleweight division, all brought to you by Eddie Hearn for Matchroom Boxing and Triple G Promotions. As we bring up his record, 12 wins, five losses, one draw, five wins coming by way of knockout. Joining us from Sacramento, California, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Michael Guy and his opponent, from London, England, 28 wins, including 16 of those coming by way of knockout against five losses. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing John, the Gorilla Rider. This is 10 rounds in the super middleweight division. Michael Guy can make his way onto the scale once he is done taking off his Sweats. The official weights for Michael Guy, 168.2 for Michael Guy, 168.2 for Michael Guy. And his opponent, John the Gorilla Rider. The official weight for Ryder, 170.2. 170.2 for the London product in John Ryder. John Ryder and Michael Guy matching up tomorrow night live on the zone. We get the action going at 5 Eastern, 2 Pacific time, right here from Hollywood, Florida. And don't forget, we want to thank our outstanding sponsors, Bet Online, Air Force Reserve and a JD Sports, a big night of boxing tomorrow night from right here in Hollywood, Florida, as John Ryder is now making his way to speak with Todd Grisham. Good to see you, John. Last time we saw you, you put on an outstanding performance against Callum Smith. A lot of people thought you won that fight. What did you take from that performance? That I should be world champion currently, but um, Politics is what politics is in boxing, and um, I'm here Friday night to, to make a statement and, and move on with my career. And what do you think is next for you if you can get a win on Friday? Well, not not looking past Mike Guy at all. He's a tough, credible opponent. Um, but 2021, I want to be building towards world titles again. 
Have you ever fought a guy that wore nipple rings to a weigh-in? Uh, not that I know of, not that I can remember, but there's a first for everything. <laughs> Maybe they're intimidating. I don't know how you feel about that. What's the strategy to beat Mike Guy on Friday? What do you have to do to win? If he's still got a nipple ring, punch him in that. <laughs> That's not a bad strategy. Are you gonna Are you gonna go for the knockout, or do you just want to box your way to a victory? No, I'm, I'm happy for either. I mean, it's been a year at the ring, a little over a year, so um, getting some rounds in is is, is important. Um, just to come away victorious. You know, a couple of weeks ago, there were rumors that it might be you actually fighting Canelo Alvarez. Is that still the fight that you would like to have? I think he bottled it, but um, yeah, we have got Mike Guy. He's, he's a, a tough. A tough man, he, he accepted the challenge. Obviously, Canelo didn't bottle it, but he, he, he saw a great opportunity in fighting Canelo Smith for the titles. But listen, I'm fully focused on Mike Guy, but next year I'll, I'll take on any comers. What's it going to be like for you to fight in an environment with no fans since you have such a passionate fan base over in England? Uh, listen, I've got everyone I need with me, Tony Sims, Dan Lawrence, Charlie Sims. I'll go to war with them anywhere in the world, so it doesn't matter who, who's by my side. It's nice to have fans, but I've got the three guys by my side I need. You certainly have a unique perspective. I'd love to get your prediction on what happens the following night after you fight between Canelo and Callum. Uh, I can only see a Canelo win. I just think uh, I think Callum's done at 168. I think his days are numbered and have been for a while, and Canelo's going to gonna rain. All right. Well, you're going to rain too, hopefully, on Friday night. We're going to make it rain. All right, make it rain. All right, good luck to you, John. All right, back over to you, Ray. Thank you very much, Todd. Now we get ready for the first hour of our three straight World title bouts tomorrow night live on the zone as we get going at 5 Eastern, 2 Pacific time. This one is 10 rounds for the Women's WBA Super Featherweight Championship of the World. And it's brought to you by Eddie Hearn for Matchroom Boxing and Triple G Promotions in association with Don Chargan Productions and Paco Presents. First of all, we want to welcome from Tolu, Colombia, her record 19 wins. 14 of those coming by way of knockout against 11 losses and three draws. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros presentando, presenting Calista Silgado. And her opponent from Seoul, South Korea, she's undefeated, 17 wins, no losses, one draw. Four wins coming by way of a knockout. She is the champion. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Yoon Mia Choi. First on to the scale, Kalista Silgado. Calista Silgado onto the scale. Her official weight, 131.4 for Silgado. 131.4 for Silgado. She is over. And her opponent, the undefeated champion from Seoul, South Korea, Yuna Mi Choi. The official weight for Choi, 130 even for Choi, 130 even for the champion. You and me, Choi and Kalista Silgado going head to head. Choi will be defending her WBA Super Featherweight Championship of the World tomorrow night live on the zone. And don't forget, we want to thank our sponsors, Bet Online, Air Force Reserve, and also JD Sports. So you and me, Choi, looking to retain her title and remain undefeated as she will have a quick conversation with Todd Grisham. Thank you, Ray. Uh, 
Hin Myu Choi is originally from North Korea. If you don't uh, know too much about her story, her family defected to South Korea. Her father had a great job at a government company in North Korea. Come on in. And when he got to South Korea, instead of everything being better, in some ways it was worse because in that country, apparently, according to Hin, uh, North Koreans are kind of looked down on and it's hard for them to get work. So they relied on you to provide money from your boxing talent for the family. That's a lot of pressure for you. Does your family still need your help in order to pay bills by your success in the boxing ring? Oh. Um, they do not need my support from boxing. Um, they don't, I mean, although they are very proud of me for what I have accomplished, um, they don't actually want me to, uh, they're not, they don't, they don't need my support. Okay, well, I guess I botched that story, didn't I? <laughs> I know as when you were younger, you certainly did at the beginning of your career. That's why you said uh, in a recent article, that's why you became a boxer was to help provide for your family. So it's good to see that they're back on their feet and doing well. This is your first time fighting outside of your home country in the United States. What's that like for you? It's, it's a great opportunity to fight in the U.S. It's always been a dream of mine. And um, moving forward, I wish to continue to be able to fight in the U.S. and show everyone a great boxing match. So what will we, will we see from you on Friday night? What is your prediction? Um, I'm KO win. There's some English for you. A KO win. Good luck to you. Thank you. All right, back over to you, Ray. Thank you very much, Todd. No need to translate that. She's predicting a knockout victory tomorrow night. Well, now we get ready for our co-main event of the evening. This one, 12 rounds for the IBO Super Middleweight Championship of the World. First of all, we want to welcome to the scale. His record, 18 wins, 13 of those coming by way of knockout against no losses. Hailing from Esmeraldas, Ecuador. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros, aquí está. Here is Carlos Gongora. And his opponent, he also holds an undefeated record, 16 wins. A dozen of those coming by way of knockout from almighty Kazakhstan. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Ali Akhmedov. It's all being brought to you by Eddie Hearn for Matchroom Boxing and Triple G Promotions. First on the scale, the hard-hitting Carlos Gongora. One sixty seven point two for Gongoram. One sixty seven point two for Gongoram. And his opponent also a heavy hitter. He's undefeated. Sixteen wins, twelve of those by way of knockout. Ali Akhmedov. The official weight for Akhmedov, one sixty seven point four for Akhmedov, one sixty seven point four for Ali Akhmedov. Ali Akhmedov and Carlos Gongoram. They will be colliding for the IBO Super Middleweight Championship of the World. That is our co-main event tomorrow night, live on DAZN. Akhmedov and Gorgona fighting for the IBO Super Middleweight Championship.
And don't forget, we want to thank Bet Online, Air Force Reserve, and JD Sports. Well, these two, this one has me excited, Todd, because they are two knockout punchers. I would bet that this one likely won't go the distance as Todd Grisham is going to have a quick talk with Ali Akhmedov as he gets set to collide against Carlos Congora. Ray, you got to give me one of those. Someone's O has got to go. Let's oh, hear Oh, you know that. Someone's O's got to go tomorrow night for the IBO Super Middleweight Championship of the World. Todd? Ali, thank you for joining me. The last time we saw you, you got a knockout in 44 seconds. What can we expect from you tomorrow night? What can we expect from you tomorrow night? You know, it's a box, and we don't know what to expect from each other. The last time it happened, we'll hope that in this year, you know, this is boxing. You cannot predict what will happen. But uh, last fight uh, was uh, a fortunate fight for me. I hope that this year, that during this fight, I will uh, be successful as well. You're one of Triple G's closest training partners. What's it like to be able to train with the middleweight champion of the world every day? Вы спаринг партнер Геннадия Головкина. Что значит тренироваться вместе с прославленным чемпионом? Ну, знаете, это, во-первых, большой опыт. Это первое такое, получать большой опыт от Геннадия. Это многого стоит для меня. Triple G is a source of a lot of experience for me. I'm gaining a lot from him. This fighter has a good amateur background like you do. He's undefeated like you do. Give me some of the similarities and dis discrepancies between your styles. У вашего соперника была хорошая карьера в любительском боксе. У вас, в принципе, есть много всего общего. В чем различие? Что вы видите у вас отличие между вами и вашим противником? Он очень хороший боец, и я отношусь к нему с уважением. Но это не любительский бокс, это профессиональный бокс, и здесь совсем другая игра. И в пятницу вечером мы будем показывать лучшую версию себя. Uh, my opponent is a solid fighter, uh, and I have a lot of respect for him. And uh, But this is not an amateur uh, fight. This is the professional fight, and on Friday, I, Friday night, we will demonstrate what we are capable of. All right. Akhmedov versus Gongora. Good luck to you. Back over to Ray Flores. Thank you very much, Todd. Now we get ready for our main event of the evening.